Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Canada here on the west coast in the city of Victoria. Victoria is the capital of the province of British Columbia. I hope everybody is having an awesome weekend so far. Hi Rajneesh, welcome to our members, members uh, Bishnoi, Esha, uh, and um, need to welcome, good to see so many uh, students in the class ready to learn, that's just fantastic. Um, students, in this class we are looking at uh, an IELTS uh, speaking part uh, three. Uh, specifically focusing on the topic of buildings. Uh, we're looking for those band nine answers. We will practice. I will give you feedback strategy. Um, it's the last class of this week uh, for live classes. Uh, there is a new speaking uh, video that you can check out. Um, that video is uh, by a Chinese candidate um, from Beijing. It's uh, IELTS uh, speaking. Um, uh, band 9 or Beijing uh, China uh, check that out new video it's quite awesome okay and you can practice with that as well uh, this material is brought to you by aehelp.com and giltshelp.com um, for general IELTS we also have the general English help YouTube channel where I see that Anish just joined welcome Anish our academic um, or sorry our general IELTS uh, website looks like this with the green background you can click this big red button that's just above my head there uh, to join our premium IELTS package and for the academic IELTS it's the blue background and you can click that big red button there it is a one-time payment for lifetime access so when you click that button you fill out this information and you can use a discount code uh, we have a couple of them right now um, you can use the code better nine better nine this is from the newest video that I was just talking about that will give you a 20% discount so uh, check that out Hi Rashika, good to see you in this class as well. Rashika, you are really studious. You're almost in every single class and that is awesome. Okay. Un, I'm glad that you checked out that video. That's great. All right, so um, one-time payment, lifetime access in India. It's as low as $25. When you use the discount code, it's just $20. Abdi Rishak Ahmed. Um, Hello, and uh, you will have a chance to speak with me in a bit uh, in the class um, as we will have a chance for IELTS speaking part three questions. Hi, Lucille. Okay, everybody. So we have apps, of course, um, like any modern company. Our apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Those apps actually link to the websites so you can learn from the same account. We also have Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help for academic, uh, G IELTS help for uh, general. And if you have questions, you can send me an email. Uh, my email address is um, Adrian at, um, trying to do some wavy circle there, um, Adrian at aehelp.com. Just up, up there, there. <laughs> there. Uh, so aehelp.com will answer your questions as quickly as we can as we can as we see them usually in less than 24 hours. Hi Sanjay, more members coming into the class. That is fantastic. All right. Uh, so um, We've got lots of classes. Uh, pay attention to the schedule. We always post the schedule on our YouTube community posts and also on Instagram so you can see our schedule. This is a peek at the schedule now. So uh, speaking part one, uh, that will be the next live class. That will be on Thursday, 
May 12th. And then we've got lots more classes. So May 13th on uh, Friday, we've got reading and speaking. Uh, May 14th, we've got writing and speaking. So lots of classes. And then we've got a special class on Light Hall. Uh, Light Hall is a new platform that is designed for live teaching. So check out Light Hall um, and uh, you can register for our class. It's absolutely free. That will be May 15th at 15 o'clock Universal um, Standard Time. That's a Sunday and that's a really cool platform. Okay. Yeah, Rashika, um, studying lots of English, spending many hours, you will be very successful, I'm sure. Okay, that's great. Okay, everyone, so uh, we've got speaking part three, and this speaking part three is about buildings. Okay, uh, speaking part three is the third and final part of um, the IELTS speaking section and interview. It follows from part two, okay, so it's connected to part two. Here, um, the um, IELTS examiner introduces the topic, so they say, let's talk about public buildings. Um, what are public buildings? Amrit, nice to see you join back. Um, so what, what do we consider a public building? As soon as you hear the examiner uh, say the title okay so as soon as you hear the topic of part three um, you should think of related words so for the example of public buildings what do you think of um, Tyson says apartments. Apartments are not necessarily public building. Museums are, that's right Simran. So they're kind of owned by the public. They're owned more or less by the government. Um, Lucille says government official building. So yeah. So government administrative buildings. Malls are usually not, they're usually private. Uh, Lay says libraries, yeah. Okay, libraries are. Yeah, Lucille says public sports centers. Yep, definitely. Lots of sports centers are public. Um, they are owned more or less by your local or uh, national government. What else? There, um, there are more. There are more public buildings. Mm hmm. Very good, Mohammed. So, courthouse, hospital. Yep, hospitals are some art centers somebody finally says maybe a university uh, definitely schools right certain schools universities as well there are public universities and post-secondary education centers uh, recreation centers yeah some colleges uh, Lucille says some Aboriginal centers, police station, fire station, yeah. Yeah, emergency uh, centers. Absolutely. Um, banks, yep, yeah, there are some publicly owned banking systems. Absolutely, yeah. Exhibition centers, yes, there are those as well. Okay, very nice, very nice. Um, Amrit says that's enough, but at the end of the day, it's never enough, um, Amrit. The more you can think of, the faster you can think about it, the better. Um, some factories, some nonprofit organizations, NGOs, yeah, some, definitely, some, uh, some of those washrooms, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. The more you can think of, the more you can use, the more you can imagine, the more tools that you have to get a high band score. So definitely, uh, you want to think of as many as possible, uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, um, so let's try a question. Let's just get right into a question.
Okay. Um, here's the first question. Um, give me a nice full sentence answer. So the question here is, what are some kinds of buildings that are open to the general uh, public? Okay. So what are some kinds of buildings that are open to the general public? Now you can give me a nice full sentence answer. Sanjay, yeah, I suppose some temples might be government uh, sponsored, but I think temples are private for the most part. So what are some kinds of buildings that are open to the general public? Try to paraphrase this as well. So try to use different words. Use the, uh, use the question in your answer, okay? little bit of coffee, a little bit of water while you're thinking. Now you want to be fast, right? Different countries have different public buildings for sure. Um, however, you do uh, want to just focus on uh, as many different kinds as you can, okay? Okay, Mohammed says, I can think of numerous buildings which are open to the public, such as, finish that sentence, Mohammed. Um, Ghazi says, there are many public facilities which uh, people use, like hospitals, recreation centers, libraries, and banks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ghazi, think about your explanation and your example. Hint, hint, that's how you get a high band score. Shopping malls, um, un, maybe in Vietnam, but most of the world shopping malls are privately owned. Okay, I'm going to start giving an answer for this as well, and then let's see if your answer kind of matches with mine. All right, here is my answer. Typed up nice and fast. Um, let's see if uh, you've come up with something similar. So uh, this is speaking, everybody. So make sure to uh, speak and repeat, okay? Copy what I say and copy how I say it, okay? So, and copy the question as well. What are some kinds of buildings that are open to the general public? There are several public facilities that are open to citizens, such as hospitals, police stations, libraries, and schools. These buildings provide essential services that are needed by most people at some point in their lives for assistance during um, times of trouble or to gain knowledge. In fact, I had to visit my local hospital the other week when I hurt my back. Okay, answer, it's here. Okay, um, and then explanation. So I don't wait for the examiner to ask me why, um, but I give the explanation why these are open, right? Because people need to use these buildings to function. And then I even give an example, and some people say, oh, my teacher said don't use a personal example in part three. It's not true, you can, you have to be smooth. You should not say for example or for instance and then, but it's okay if you include a personal example. I did that when I sat the IELTS exam incognito and I got a bad nine. So obviously 
you can get a band nine if you give a personal example. I'm a living, uh, I'm living proof of that. Okay. So if your teacher says you can't get a band nine, you can say, well, I actually talked to a guy online who did the IELTS exam in Budapest, and he said he got a band nine. Uh, you can actually see the video, and I show you the official <laughs> um, transcript. It's on our channel. And I got a band nine in the speaking, so that's not true. And examples are really good to emphasize your points. Okay, so this is the example here. Uh, should you give an example for every single answer? No, nah, not necessarily. Maybe only 60%, 70%. Should they always be personal examples? Not necessarily. You can give general examples like a research study last year showed, right? But make sure it's original and believable, okay? All right, so answer, explain, and example. Generally speaking, that's what's needed for a great band score, all right? Um, Anish, use the question. So uh, public facilities include especially museums and historical places because it helps people to know the importance of their past, um, the arts, music and dance. There are numerous museums in India, um, including the Taj Mahal and the uh, Kutab Minar. Okay, Anish, don't repeat words like historical three times in the same sentence. I'm correcting students in real time, so um, watch my correction. We will be doing some audio calling here in a moment uh, to practice, but for now I'm just looking at some of these. So Simran says, I think there are numerous buildings that are completely open for public, um, like museums, banks, schools, uh, colleges, libraries, and hospitals, NGOs, where people can go without any hesitation. Okay, that answers the question. It's good, Simran. Throw in a why, okay? And why answer? Why are these open? Why are they available? What's the reason? Uh, Lucille says, my take on this is buildings used uh, for welfare, such as hospitals and sports centers, are open to the public. These buildings provide not only essential services, but also promote health. Okay, a couple of corrections there, Lucille, uh, for you, so pay attention to that. I'm looking at um, the chat here, everybody. So just so you know what I'm looking at. Uh, Tyson says there are a variety. It's kind of weird, but we use a with variety. There are a variety of residential areas that are open to the public in many countries, such as hospitals, police stations, libraries, and schools. Why, Tyson? Rashika says there are many public buildings such as schools, libraries, and museums uh, open for public use. These organizations provide services for people uh, to improve uh, their quality of life. Okay, Ghazi, these facilities can accommodate thousands of people and they can do all of their activities like having big recreation centers where people visit um, where people of all ages visit. People of all ages visit. People of all ages visit, okay? Okay, good. Um, and uh, here's the follow-up question. So IELTS part three is pretty much always uh, like a conversation style, getting into more and more detail. So the next question might be something like, um, what is needed to maintain these buildings? Give me a nice full sentence answer uh, for this question. So what is needed to maintain these buildings? Okay. Um,
All right, there's my answer. Again, follow up, I'm focusing on answer, explanation, and example. So uh, what is needed to uh, maintain these buildings? I suppose a lot of money, uh, of course, public funds that are collected from taxes are needed for the operation and maintenance. Another way to say maintenance, anybody know another word for maintenance? I got a couple in my head. Let's see if you come up with it. So are needed for the operation and maintenance of public buildings. Millions of dollars are used to repair, expand, and hire staff to run buildings such as libraries and schools. My university just got a $5 million grant from the government to rebuild the administrative uh, building. Okay. So, uh, let's see what you come up with. Ghazi says, um, in order to preserve those facilities, a government should allocate a budget for repair, um, a budget for frequent repair or needed repair, and they will need to organize activities like uh, for public hospitals, they need financial support, and uh, Ghazi, the end of your answer is losing uh, focus. Um, I'm not sure where you're going with it. Try to rethink it. The beginning is very good. Uh, make the end clear also, okay? Uh, Mohammed says an abundant amount of money. Um, no, saying an abundant amount of money is awkward English, so don't say that, Mohammed. Um, if you win the lottery, you might have an abundant amount of money, but we usually don't use those two words together in natural English. Uh, New Ng Kwan says, for me, when it comes to maintenance, it is money that is needed the most for maintaining operational activities of buildings as well as their functions. Uh, Kwan, you're repeating yourself. Uh, operational activities and functions, it's the same. Okay, don't repeat yourself. Actually, a funding program is sensible. Um, sure, it's sensible, but what is needed? So you said money is needed. Okay, good. Now explain a little bit more. Um, is it just money? You also need uh, workers, right? So you need people that have skills like carpenters who can rebuild, right? Um, so uh, Nguyen, it's not a, or sorry, uh, Quan. Nguyen's a very popular name in Vietnam. Uh, Quan, it's not about um, how much you say, but it's also about what you say. For those high band scores like band eight, band nine, you need to have good information. All right, um, Anish says the government wants to allow funds to take care and they need to provide for them budget. Okay, Anish, clear English, okay? So the government must allocate a budget to take care of these buildings. In India, the ministry provides funds annually to repair the windows, the walls, and other parts of these uh, public facilities. So Anish, clarity, clarity and detail, okay? Rashika says, to maintain these buildings, the government and public uh, help is crucial. In this way, government can allocate money to repair and improve quality of services and public have a responsibility to protect these buildings from damage. Very good, Rashika, and people actually use public funds also. Um, okay, nice. So we're on a roll here and uh, everybody's doing a great job. How about let's actually talk to people. It's so much more exciting, so much more fun. Um, so let's take some volunteers. Now, as you can tell, um, it's speaking part three. This class is a bit more intense. It's a bit more involved. It's the last class of the week. So I want lots of energy from everybody. Lots of volunteers. Um, to volunteer for speaking, everyone. Okay. So volunteering for speaking. Go to ahelp.com. That's your first step. HTTPS. It's SSL secured. You're safe. All's good. Okay. Go to my student account. Click on student partner speaking. Enable your microphone. Make sure your microphone and your speaker works. People complain about my camera not working sometimes. Sheesh. 
Um, all right. Uh, keep the window open. Okay. And then uh, message me. Send master a message. I want to volunteer. And I'll ping you. I'll be like, hey, are you there? And then I'll call you. Okay. Let me show you this. Okay. So first, go to the website, aehelp.com. Okay. Looks like this. Um, register a new user. Uh, you can get our premium package by clicking the join now. Okay. And then um, you can use this code better9 for that 20% discount, as I mentioned. Okay. Now, if you don't want to uh, spend like $20 um, for a whole bunch of IELTS exams, materials, videos, and help to help you get that band eight, band nine, and you don't want to spend that $20, you just want to try it for free and try your luck and see what happens on the exam, then uh, you can also um, you can also click this green button, try demo, it's free. Um, and then you get a couple of videos, I think one exam, it's still that way. Um, and, and that's okay, but I would definitely recommend joining the premium package if you got a bit of time. And then uh, you're in your My Student account. Your uh, My Student account, I'm not logged in yet, asset, but I will be there in a second. Um, your My Student account has all of your content, your computer based exams, full course, uh, link to your app. Um, you can download the app with the, uh, by the way, for those of you that don't have the app, um, you can download it by just uh, putting your camera over that QR code or you can click on that link there, okay? It's super easy. All right, um, and right now what you wanna do is you want to uh, click on this student partner speaking that's just above my head there that I just circled. Okay, and then when you click on that student partner speaking, then you will now see me in here, um, Sidakov. Okay, so um, I can see Usman, Amrit, Kwan, Sethupathi, Hadishe, Kumalpreet, Ghazi, Kevin, Juan Pablo, long time no see. I see you there. It's great. Um, okay, and then uh, we've got lots of people in here now, so let me put on my ears. I should say headphones. Okay, um, and uh, then we will uh, do a little bit of speaking practice. So, uh, Amrit, I see you there as well. I'll ping you in just a moment. Uh, let's try Asset. Since he was so adamant, uh, this is, uh, I'm guessing this is uh, Sisdikov, Asset Sisdikov, are you ready? Okay, and now you're going to hear your fellow classmates and I will ask a question or two, give you some feedback, take some notes, and hopefully help you improve your speaking score for your speaking exam. So, uh, let's do this. Ooh, that ring is loud. All right, Sistikov, it sounds like you picked up, but I don't hear you. I've got a little bit of static, so it sounds like you're there somewhere, but I don't hear an audio. Um, did you enable your microphone? Does it work with websites if you're using a mobile? You gotta check that out. Best way um, is to check with other students. So you, you uh, send a message to somebody else and then see if it works. We've got a connection, that's why we can type to each other, but um, no audio connection. Uh, the best is, of course, computer, PC, laptop, uh, with a strong Wi-Fi connection. Okay, it's usually the best. And definitely don't try to video connect because I'm using video for YouTube, so that won't work. Okay, um, try it out and then come back. I'll look for you, okay? All right. Uh, let's go for Amrit. Amrit is always so, um, so positive with your super chat donations and questions. Just a, a great student, Amrit. Are you ready?
Let's see if Amrit is there. Okay, let me sit up straight. Hi, sir. Hi, Amrit. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. What about you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. Um, any plans for the weekend? Uh, yes, I will visit some historical places to unwind. Okay. What are you planning to see? Um, maybe like Golden Temple, which is quite popular place in Punjab, or maybe uh, other historical places. All right. That I live in. Good. If you take some pictures, share them. Send send me one. I'd love to see it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, sure, sure, sir. <laughs> okay, uh, Amrit, uh, can you remind me again? Why are you taking the IELTS exam? Actually, I have been studying in the Bachelor of Arts for the past two years, two years, mm -hmm. and I want to pursue my master in Canada, mm -hmm. maybe in Toronto City. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, in Master of Arts. Master of Arts. Um, what specific area? Uh, I'm not decided yet, uh, but uh, most of the, uh, most of my ladies are live in Toronto City, mm -hmm. or even in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a very far apart, right? Toronto and Vancouver. There's about five thousand. It's five hours by plane. <laughs> so it's a... yeah, if I will have a chance, I definitely <laughs> meet you. <laughs> right. Yeah. In the future. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you never know for sure. And uh, what are you focusing on right now? So you said that you finished two years of bachelor studies and bachelor of arts. What are most of your subjects? So what is your concentration so far? Um, there are uh, three main uh, subjects like elective English, mathematics subject, and physical education. Okay, so physical education, math, and English. It almost sounds like you're going towards a career in education. Have you thought about that? Mm, but I, uh, now I have a keen interest in teaching the children, so that's why I choose uh, the mathematics subject. I see. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. There's definitely a lot of very good uh, masters of education programs at the University of Toronto, so you might want to check those out. Okay, Amrit, um, let's get into some part three questions. Thank you for volunteering. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start from the top, okay? So this is kind of what it so. sounds like. Uh, that is the end of part two. Now uh, we will continue with part three. Please put your notes and your pen to the side. I will take back the questions. Um, now I will ask you some questions. Let's talk about um, public uh, buildings. What are some kinds of buildings that are open to the general public? Mm, well, there are several public facilities uh, that are open to citizens, like uh, police stations, library, art centers, and schools, uh, which is quite uh, uh, very beneficial for citizens or even some different type of uh, to, uh, public uh, places that is really good for tourists. And it provides essential services uh, that are needed uh, by most of the people at uh, in uh, trouble or even uh, to gain more knowledge about. And even last Sunday, I visit, visited to the public library in Tantan City and I gained a lot of knowledge about what happened in the past in Punjab. And, uh, and uh, I think this, uh, this, uh, these are the buildings that is really uh, beneficial for general public. How can uh, governments maintain these buildings? Mm, I think uh, uh, money is uh, really important, uh, play a really uh, provider role to building some public uh, buildings. And the public uh, funds that are uh, collected from the taxes are uh, needed for operation and uh, uh, a maintenance for public buildings and even uh, millions of Indian fees are spent on uh, repair some public uh, uh, public buildings and uh, higher staff for uh, 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 higher staff for running some library uh, such as uh, libraries uh, colleges and uh, even uh, uh, the, in this last month the government the government of India are sp uh, spending a lot of uh, um, um, 
lot of Indian space to build more universities for students. Okay. Uh, it's really tough. To <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. Uh, it's fine. No, no, no. Uh, you'll never know what you get for part three. Um, in fact, these questions might be easier than some other questions that they ask you. So uh, it's it's it can be any question. So you really have to be. I mean, part three, um, Amrit, is um, a conversation on a specific topic, and they can ask you just about any question they want on those topics. So uh, when they're searching for that band nine level expert user. Okay, let me give you a little bit of feedback because you're doing, you know, you're taking some correct steps and there are always places to improve uh, communication. So you're fluent, you're answering the question, you're not going off topic. That's really good. Okay. Um, and um, uh, your pronunciation is clear. All right. Um, now where you can make improvements is the content. So what you are saying. Okay and also the way you're saying it so how you're saying it especially the connections all right uh, let me uh, jump back here so i asked you um what are some kinds of buildings that are open to the general public and you said well uh, there are several public facilities that was a good paraphrase there the public facilities he said, well, there are several public facilities that are open to citizens. You were kind of repeating the answer that we practiced, which is great. Uh, and then you made it a little bit unique by talking about your country um, in India. Okay. Um, and here you said, which is beneficial for citizens, which was also a good paraphrase. One word that you often put into your uh, communication is the word even. Okay. There are even this, even that, even this. Try to minimize the use of even in your uh, communication because it does get a bit confusing when you overuse a certain word like even. Okay? Okay, sir. All right. Now, the other tip from uh, this first um, answer that you gave you gave the answer and then you started to repeat your answer. So you said, and I think these are open to the general public. So if you listen back to this part of your answer, this very last part, you will realize that you're just repeating yourself. You're almost saying the exact same sentence that you started with or that you included in the middle. Uh, you shouldn't do that. Okay. That makes for awkward, redundant language. So once you have given your answer just stop don't repeat yourself um maybe you're thinking i mean like you're summarizing or you're concluding your answer but an example will do that don't repeat the start of your answer okay okay sir does, does that does that make sense yeah so when you feel like oh i'm about to repeat my answer again just stop yourself because the examiner if for most candidates will interrupt them when they start repeating so remember interruptions happen when you're repeating yourself okay okay sir all right um so the second question i asked is what what does the government need to maintain these buildings so i asked it a little bit differently than um than the first time but basically the same question. So what is needed to maintain these buildings? What does the government need to maintain these buildings, right? And then you took a second. So you're like, mm, I think, and maybe it's the delay, <laughs> maybe it's our connection, but um, you shouldn't wait too long at the beginning when you're answering the question. If you need a minute to think, buy some time. How can you buy time? What can you say to buy time? Yeah, just say that. Please give me a moment. Uh, okay. Um, sure, there are lots of expressions, right? So there's kind of a list, like um, that's a good question or that's an important question or an unusual question, okay? So think about these ones. I'm going to write this up. This is for everybody, okay? So uh, learn to buy time with correct. It's very important here, with correct uh, expressions, okay? So uh, there are lots of different ways, but you have to use the correct one. And I'll show you a few different ones. So
that's an interesting question. Give me a moment, please. Or that's an unusual question. Uh, give me a moment, please. Um, or that's an important question. Allow me a moment to think. By the way, I hope people are repeating me when I'm saying these. Uh, Amrit, you can repeat me. That's an important question. Allow me a moment to think. Oh, that's an important question. Allow me a moment to think. Okay, good. Um, or I haven't really thought about that. Please give me a second. Try that one. I haven't really thought about that. Please give me a second. I have not really thought about that. Please give me a second. Okay. That's an unusual question. Uh, give me a moment, please. That's an unusual question. Give me a moment, please. That's an interesting question. Uh, give me a moment. That's an interesting question. Give me a moment. Okay, now these aren't the same. You can't just use any of these for any question. Okay, that's where a lot of students make oh. a mistake is they just use any one of these. Like if I ask you, for example, Amrit, what is your hobby? Do you think it's a, a good idea to say that's an unusual question? Give me a moment, please. I'm Hello, can you? Yep. Uh, sorry, sir. Okay, can you okay. repeat, please? Yeah. So, if I ask you what is your hobby, and you tell me that's an unusual question, give me a moment, please. Um, do you think that's a good idea? Uh, I think, sir, no, <laughs> it's not a good idea, <laughs> because it's a uh, usual questions and asking uh, uh, every day and every student. Yeah, it's not an unusual question, right? So the examiner is going to give you a weird look and they're going to know that you're trying to maybe play some tricks on them to buy time, right? So it's not an unusual question. Um, but if I ask you something like, um, uh, if you could uh, swim in any ocean, where would you go swimming? And then you say, that's an unusual question. Please give me a moment. Do you think that's a good way to use it? Um, I think yes. Yeah, because it's not every day that somebody asks you if you had a chance to go swimming in any ocean, where would you go swimming? So you have to be, you know, you have to use the correct one and you have to practice that. Um, in this case, what is needed to maintain these buildings? Which one of these four do you think would be a good way to buy yourself some time? Uh, that's an interesting question. And give me a moment. Yeah, I think it, I think it's okay, but, but I don't think it's the best choice. It's an unusual question. Mm, I don't uh, think I don't think that's the best choice either. Mm, uh, I think I have not really thought about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> there's one left. <laughs> so it's, it's an important question, right? <laughs> so okay. Uh, I mean, think about it, like, right? Libraries, schools, public washrooms, we need to maintain those, right? If they get damaged, if they're not maintained, that's a big problem. People complain about it all the time. So it's an important question. It's important for people. It's important for society, right? Okay, so I understand now. Okay, so that's where you'd want to say something like, that's an important question. Allow me a moment to uh, think about that. Okay, I suppose public funding, taxes, uh, maybe donations are really important. And of course, uh, uh, experts, professionals like carpenters, electricians, uh, plumbers, they're needed to maintain these buildings. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so it's an important question. It's not an unusual question. I, people talk about that. People say like, why hasn't that school been maintained? Or why, why is that library in such bad shape? Okay, so it's an important question, right? Okay, sir. All right. Um, now, of course, again, one last tip is uh, don't rush, Amri. Your, your English, your fluency is quite good. So I would recommend speaking a little bit slower next time and um, paying more attention to connecting your answers. Okay. So you said, mm, I think money is really important. Okay. Now, don't repeat important if you use this. So uh, that's an important question. Uh, let me think. Okay, now don't repeat. So I believe uh, money is really uh, essential. 
instead of important, right? So we're paraphrasing to bump up that vocabulary. Or um, plays an essential role. Money plays an essential role. Um, okay, and this can come from taxes or donations. And when you're speaking, Amrit, this is where you want to connect, okay? So also or furthermore. So also um, professionals are needed uh, like plumbers, electricians, um, and carpenters. Carpenters. What did you say? Uh, details are not for schools. Yeah, that's for. School. But careful, that's for operations, right? This is the question is more for maintenance. So you want to focus on the question, right? It's not for operating these buildings. It's for maintaining these buildings, right? Um, so you want to focus on that. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. So electricians and carpenters um, are required to repair uh, and construct. Okay, um, and then the rest of what you were saying here, uh, I like the millions of rupees, but you had a lot of repetition. So um, I would just add this example here. In this last month, the government spent uh, millions of Indian rupees Uh, to build uh, three u new universities. So don't generalize your example. So when you say an example, Amrit, don't say like a lot of rupees to build many universities. Instead, try to really focus on like a specific example, okay? So they spent uh, 300 million rupees to build a new public university in um, Punjab, okay? Okay, sir. Spent millions of Indian rupees to build three universities for students in uh, Punjab. Mm, okay, yeah, it's, a, it's a really good idea to using the numbers in answer. Yeah, and especially examples because they'll make your examples even more specific. Okay. Okay, sir. All right, uh, let's try this. So I'm going to repeat the question and the answer, and then copy me. So, what is needed to maintain these buildings? That's an important question. Uh, let me think. I believe money plays an essential role and this can come from taxes or, and donations. Also professionals are needed like uh, plumbers, electricians and carpenters are required to repair and construct buildings like libraries and schools. Uh, in this last month, the government spent millions of Indian rupees to build three new universities for students in Punjab. So what is needed to maintain these buildings? That's a, an important question. Um, let me think. I believe money plays uh, an essential role and these can come from taxes or donations. Also professionals are needed like plumbers, electricians and carpenters are required to repair and construct. In this last month, the government spent millions of Indian rupees to build three new universities for students in Punjab. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's how you do it. Uh, plumbers, silent B. Okay, plumbers, no B. That's why I forgot to write it. So silent B. Okay, plumbers. Plumbers. No, plumbers. no B. Plumbers. Plumbers. Plum plumbers. 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 Yeah, no B. No B sound. Okay. All right, uh, Amrit, um, thank you for volunteering and thank you for helping me uh, show everybody the different kinds of leading expressions that can help to buy a few seconds and they also help you to stay fluent to start speaking right away. So use those and pay attention to those connections, okay? So a little bit slower, Amrit, better connections, okay? Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Give me for a nice chance. Absolutely. Have a lovely rest of your weekend and I hope to uh, see you in Canada someday. Yes, bye-bye. Okay, bye for now. All right, that was Amrit. Um, students, give Amrit a thumbs up. He, he's, he's such a great guy, always uh, actively participating in classes, um, respecting what we do through Super Chat donations. He's a member, so just a really lovely student to have. 
Um, and here's another lovely student um, who's volunteering uh, right now, Ghazi. Let's see if Ghazi uh, is still with us today. Ghazi is actually already here in Canada in on the other side of Canada, or on the Atlantic side. I'm on the Pacific side of Canada. Of course, Canada being surrounded by oceans. Canada has more shoreline than any other country in the world. So all the way from the Atlantic to the Arctic to the Pacific. Uh, let's see if Ghazi is still with us. For Ghazi, it's uh, 1121 right now. For me, it's 821. We're three time zones apart. Hello, Adrian. Hello, good morning, Ghazi. Still morning for you for a little bit, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So everything is okay. The weather and uh, people and uh, everything <laughs> is perfect so far. <laughs> so far, so good, right? Is this... So far, so good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any plans for the weekend? Actually, no, I just here with my family. Could we will go outside um, just for uh, a walk? So Good. that is everything. What What do people do in Newfoundland on the weekend? Is it the same as over here in British Columbia? Well, see people, uh, they um, stay rush and they uh, like to work uh, even on the uh, weekend. Uh, I see they uh, have many activities uh, like uh, hunting. It's a very famous uh, moose here. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, kind of like us. It's the same. Hunting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a, a big uh, forest is actually here in Newfoundland. You know, Newfoundland uh, is an uh, island, so. That's right, yeah. The Newfoundland itself is an island, and then Labrador is more kind of a, a part of uh, northern Quebec there, right? Yeah, exactly. So you will find uh, different kind of uh, animals. So people like to go uh, for fishing, uh, f fish for fish or uh, hunt like moose. Okay. Have you have you ever seen a moose yourself? Yeah, I have uh, some friends. Yeah, sometimes I go with them. So. <laughs> oh, cool! Right on. Uh, moose, of course, is one of the largest land animals, right? So. Yeah, I met amazing. them in person. Even when I go uh, for a drive, for example, on the highway, uh, sometimes you can uh, meet them on the way. So. <laughs> yeah, and it's very dangerous, yeah. right? You never yeah, want to yeah. hit a, hit a moose because I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, a lot um... of accidents. Yeah, by uh, moose here. Yeah, it's very famous on uh, on Canada Transway we call it here. So yeah, yeah, and those animals can be like uh, one ton, right? Over a thousand kilograms, so they can yeah. they can crush a car, uh, no problem. Yeah, so yeah, especially moose is very strong uh, animal. So if you hit it, so it will damage all the vehicles. So yeah, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. And the moose runs away. They don't. They're not not like deer or other animals that kind of die when you hit them. But the moose will get up and keep going, right? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. So he's like uh, a stupid. They call it a stupid animal. So. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Oh, they're so cute. Come on, Gazi. They got that yeah, huge, okay. huge, yeah, huge, okay. huge nose. Let's call them the cute, cute big animal. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I like them in general. Yeah, so. yeah they're beautiful bees. Okay, yeah. Ghazi, uh, let's get into some uh, part three questions, um, okay. and um, and then I'll give you some feedback. Uh, but uh, yeah, moose, I love okay. them. <laughs> I hunt yeah. them. I hunt them too. I'll be okay. honest. I'll, I'll yeah. be honest with you, yeah. Ghazi. Yeah, so. I see. <laughs> All right, okay, Ghazi. So here we go. Um, part three. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. So, um, how are the construction of public buildings funded? Uh, actually, there's many uh, ways uh, to uh, uh, fund uh, these facilities, uh, but the most uh, uh, or a major uh, fund uh, is come from the uh, public uh, revenue from the government. They uh, allocate uh, uh, amount of money uh, every year in order to uh, uh, renew them or uh, uh, build uh, new facilities. Uh, other way, uh, that's uh, socially, there is social uh, funding like uh, donations, uh, like uh, uh, small communities, they uh, uh, 
raise money uh, in order to uh, build these facilities. Um, like three months ago, uh, the people in uh, town uh, where I live, uh, they uh, raised uh, about uh, $5,000 in order to uh, uh, fix uh, the uh, library. Very nice answer. I love it. Yeah, yeah that was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was great. That was uh, that was one of your best answers so far, Ghazi. Um, okay. I think that was um, a band uh, 6.5 to 7. I didn't respond yeah. to Amrit. Amrit, by the way, if you're still listening, yours was about a band 6 to 6.5. Um, Ghazi, yours was about 6.5 to 7, so about half a band to yeah. a band better, um, not to compare, but just the yeah. reason for it is you had better connection and you had more detail without repetition. That always yeah. leads to better responses. Um, your fluency was pretty good there too, okay? So that's why it's, uh, it's closer to a 7 than a 6.5. Okay. Um, and it was nice. It was natural. Um, try to yeah. soften your pronunciation. That takes time, but try to work on softening your pronunciation. Your mother tongue is Arabic? Arabic, yeah. I'm yeah. from Syria, so you know. Uh, yeah. Yes, not too bad. Yeah, our mother tongue. Uh, there's no except two letters with English, like P letters. Like I know. Yeah, so <laughs> Arabic is much more crisp. It's like a rap, rap. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah, and English is kind of a softer. It's like a th 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 it's like we're yeah. it's like we're th uh, it's like we're kind of spitting our words, right? So, yeah. um work on that. You can you can train mm. yourself to soften your sounds, but it's not the end of the world if, you know, if you don't master it, but you you want to maybe spend a bit of time to soften Yeah, I, I was sounds. worried about uh, the fluency, uh, uh, the speed, exactly. That's why I uh, worry about so. You told me before about the speed. I have to increase it so a little bit. So Absolutely, I yeah. I paid attention to that, uh, yeah, so. And, and you've been doing it. I can tell. I can tell you've been practicing. So uh, let me uh, let me go through your answer here in more detail. You said, actually, there's, I like how you contracted the there is, and it was a very clear S, so it was a good contraction. You said, actually, there's many ways to fund these facilities. Now, you were very smart that you didn't just tell me about the government because you said many ways right so i was hoping that you would give me at least two ways if you're going to say that and you did that so you said government funds they mm. allocate i really like the word allocate that's nice vocabulary allocate means to dedicate to a certain direction allocate yeah. money here so it's good vocabulary and then you said social funds that was a really nice collocation so yeah. your uh, your vocabulary is um for me an easy band eight okay, okay. your lexical resource mm -hmm. so i think you have and that comes from living in canada now for a while you've heard a lot of words and you're starting to pick them up and use them in yeah, your absolutely. speech and yeah. writing right which is great yeah. okay um instead of other way uh another way okay mm. Another. So uh, it's tricky to kind of figure out when to use other and another. Um, whenever yeah. you have one and the other, it's usually another. Okay. Yeah. So Some I have thing. one idea and I have another idea. Use it like an adjective and a noun. So that. Uh, yeah. Think thing. about context too, Ghazi. So just repeat for me. I, I have an no. idea and I have another idea. I have an idea and I have another idea. Okay, versus other where it's meaning distinct from a, so separate from this, okay? So yeah. other people like mm. pizza, but I don't. Other people like pizza, but I don't. So it's a separation no. of for example, well, one no, from other. the rest, right? Okay, so that's the difference in the other and another. Another, you can almost think about it if, if it were two words, like, right? Like another. So it's another one of those, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, as looks another, we use it uh, with uh, uh, singular more than brawler, I think. That's one of them. When it's one and two, so one and two, it's another. Yeah. When it's 
many different from one than its other. So that's how you think about it. It's a very common mistake, not just for Arabic speakers, but for a lot of non-native speakers, this confusion of even, yeah. na even native speakers sometimes will yeah. confuse other and another. Okay, so yeah, it's a common yeah, yeah, that is very close uh, in form and in the meaning, so that... Uh, it's tricky. Um, yeah. And then you said, like, small communities raise money to fund these buildings. So, yeah, so donations, um, yeah. charities, and so on. And then you broke into a very nice natural uh, personal example. You didn't say, for example, you just said it right away. You said, in the town where I live. That was really good because you use that adjective clause there. So in the town where I live, it's that kind of adjective clause composition that yeah. makes language natural, makes it original, right? Because it's the town where you live. So it yeah. makes it original and you get points. And that kind of an example is brilliant for bumping your mark. So um, in the town where I live, people raised $5,000 in order to fix the library. Beautiful, quantified. Yeah. You know, I can literally see people doing little food drives and maybe cake yeah. cake bakes. Was it real? Is it did some did they actually raise five thousand dollars in your town for the library? Yeah, that is uh, frequently. It's not uh, for the, the library. For many things, uh, that's uh, even for simple things people uh, go to. Yeah, the, the there is uh, one character in Newfoundland or people. They uh, they are uh, generous people. So. Yeah, Canadians tend to yeah. um, really have that in their culture where they volunteer and they pull together yeah. to make that happen. And that's great. I think that's, you know, that's something that um, other cultures yeah. can definitely adapt or adopt. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Now, Ghazi, don't use the word things, right? So there are many goals or many um, activities or many buildings. Always avoid that word things, okay? No, thanks. Yeah, please right. not. Yeah, okay. Okay, so just I'm just going to repeat the question, the answer, copy after me. So how are the construction of public buildings funded? Actually, there's many ways to fund these facilities, but the major fund comes from public revenue. The government, they allocate an amount of money every year uh, to renew um, these buildings or build new facilities. Another way are uh, social funds um, like um, donations. Small communities yeah. raise money to fund these buildings. In the town where I live, uh, people raise $5,000 in order to uh, fix the library. Okay, go ahead. Uh, actually, there there is many ways uh, to fund these facilities, but the major uh, fund comes from uh, public uh, revenue. The government, uh, they allocate uh, an amount of money every year to renew them or build uh, new facilities. And their way are social funds like uh, donations, uh, small, com small communities raise money to fund these uh, buildings. Uh, in uh, the uh, town where I live, people raised $5,000 in order to fix the library. Very nice. Okay, very nice, Ghazi. Keep it up and keep your, your you're improving so whatever you're doing keep doing it okay so keep talking to people keep talking to your family yeah. and you. uh, and you'll keep getting better Ghazi have a great Saturday in uh, Newfoundland thank you Adrian I appreciate your uh, advices you're... So thank you and have a nice weekend thank you 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 are very welcome bye Ghazi bye bye okay that's Ghazi give Ghazi a thumbs up um, yeah Moose. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's uh, let's check it out here. Quan, I think, has been very patient and waiting. Uh, Quan wants to volunteer. I have a feeling Quan is most likely in Vietnam. That would be my guess. Let's see if Quan is ready. I will always send a message first, just to make sure you haven't gotten bored and gotten up and gone away. Um, by the way, uh, students, um, make sure you're doing repetition when I'm working with another student. Make sure you're paying attention because a lot of the mistakes, a lot of the advice is applicable across the board to a lot of candidates. So a lot of people make that other another mistake, okay? So uh, pay attention, okay? Just because I'm not talking to you doesn't mean that you should be like, oh, he's not talking to me. Let's just uh, forget about that. Um, all right, here we go with Quan. Uh, 
Hello, Quan. Can you hear me? I hear that you picked up, but I don't hear your voice. If you're on a mobile phone with a um, data connection, it might be tricky. Quan, uh, what I recommend, because I know you've been waiting so patiently. Quan, uh, try it with somebody else, like um, text Ghazi or text uh, Komal Preet and say, hey, can, can we test our system or Kevin? Uh, and then um, once you know that you have a good connection and you can hear each other talking, then uh, ping me back and say, I've tested it. It works fine now. Um, okay. And then and then we'll uh, go from there. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Asset, did you test your connection? Okay. Asset, are you ready? Did you test it? Did you test your connection? Okay, or did you switch devices? If you checked, if you switched, then I can call you and we can try. Okay, Quan, sounds good. Let's see. Uh, assets not really replying, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's see if Lucille is here. Okay, Lucille, are you ready? I know you have usually a good connection. Here we go. Lucille, I think, is in Taiwan, maybe? Let's see. Hello. Hi, Lucille. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Um, actually, I'm on call, but one of my colleagues is willing to help me recover my patient. Okay, nice. So uh, you started to practice a bit of English. Uh, yeah, right. You're in the hospital and you're on call. Okay. So, Lucille, um, what's the what's the biggest animal that you you have there in Taiwan? So here in Canada, it's the moose for sure for land animals. What's the biggest animal that you have there? Mm, I think it will be black bear. It's a specialist uh, species in my in Taiwan. It have a clear V, white V in its um forward chest. So it's a typical. It's a typical mark of this white bear. Okay. Black bear. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that after uh, after class because I'm I think I've seen pictures of it, but it's quite a beautiful animal, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> have you have you ever seen have you ever seen one? No, it's a kind of vicious animal. It will attack you <laughs> if you see them. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a hunter. It would be a bad I'd be a bad person for it. To attack. <laughs> but, uh, okay, Lucia, let me ask you uh, some part three questions, and then I will give you some feedback and score estimates. How does that sound? Okay. All right. Here we go. So if you're doing a good job in IELTS uh, speaking. The examiner might kind of introduce a related topic to the um, previous. So here we go. Uh, let's talk about buildings of the future. Mm -hmm. How do you think buildings will be different in the future than they are now? Well, um, previously or nowadays, the uh, buildings are usually weather beaten and they have a poor outside appearance because they because of the COVID-19. So <laughs> they are lack of fund to maintain it. But I think in the future, the buildings will be disappeared because we can, um, we can depend, we can rely on the information on internet. So lots of, of the education opportunities or work can solved um, by technology. Okay. Why do you think this? Mm, because, you know, with the, gro the significant growth of human populations, um, people are really sick of the uh, other accommodation to live. And the triple one is the best, is the better. 
So I think a building will be used for accommodation or you know education uh, purpose rather than something like government office or um, nothing important <laughs> buildings. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you are at about a band six to six point five with those answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I can, I'm going to give you a so pronunciation is not super important for the IELTS exam, but it is important uh, to the degree that I have to clearly understand you. And kind of like with Ghazi, you want to work on you know softening your uh, pronunciation for some of these words. And a good way to do that is to just copy a lot of native English. So choose one, like choose American. English, for example, and then if you have a favorite actor or actress or podcast, then really just copy the speaker regularly and really try to copy the sounds that they make because I think you have a lot of English in your head um, and a lot of vocabulary. So you want to use those clearly and well, okay? Mm -hmm. That's just kind of as a first general tip. Um, also, uh, don't rush your answers. You have good ideas. Um, you want to focus on expressing them a bit clearer. So let me go back here and let me let us you know look at these in, in a bit more detail. So I said, how do you think buildings will be different in the future than they are now? So clearly this question is fishing for that future tense, like uh, future perfect, like will have been, buildings will have been, or buildings will be. And I think you realize that. So you, you did use the, the uh, future participle will several times, which uh -huh. was great. Okay, now, um, I think for this kind of question, buying yourself a little bit of time, especially since I just introduced the topic to you, buying yourself a little bit of time is a really good idea. Um, were, did you join the lesson earlier when I was speaking with Amrit? Yeah, I, I joined, but I think it's, you know, um, it, it's different from the usual I talk to someone. So I know it will drag down my score because of the hesitation, right? Right. So remember I said to Amrit, <laughs> this is where you want to use one of these um, kinds of expressions, buying time. And when you use these correctly, they definitely will help you to get a better score. Um, which one of these four um, do you think would have been a good choice to uh, use in this question? Well, um, maybe that's an interesting question. And, uh... Yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah. It's, it's definitely mm -hmm. right. So that's an interesting question. Um, would be a good choice. Um, which which other one could have been a good one? I think there's one more that I. Or would I be... can connect like a. Um, this is a interesting question. As far as I concerned, um, like you that. can. <laughs> but if you just say, "Give me a moment," it's okay. I would also maybe choose number two. That's an unusual question. Um, mm -hmm. or I've never really thought about that would be a really good one because you're showing present perfect, right? Like most of us don't really think about how buildings in the future will be different. Like, oh yeah, I just had a conversation with my friend yesterday about buildings in the future. Uh, no, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not something you think about. So I haven't really thought about that. Please give me a second. And while you're saying that, that's automatic. So while you're saying that, you're actually trying to see this big, tall glass building that has like thousands of people living in it and they're all home office, as you said, instead of going into the actual office building. So I would have done that at the beginning, okay? So I would have said, um, I haven't really thought about that. Mm -hmm. Thought about it, uh, just give me a moment. And if you use this kind of a leading expression twice or three times, um, especially in part three, it's totally okay, especially if you're using the right um, uh, leading sentence. And then you said, well, uh, previously or nowadays, uh, buildings are usually um, 
uh, have a poor outside appearance. Okay, uh, that was a bit confusing for me. I kind of got what you're saying. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, what you're trying to tell me there, Lucille, is that because of COVID, people have abandoned a lot of buildings and they um, are in uh, poor shape. Is that what you were telling me? Mm, I think I said um, something like because uh, because of COVID-19, people are and the government are laid off the fund to maintain the facilities. Sorry, what's that word you're saying there before maintain? Fund to maintain? To maintain? Yeah, um, you said uh, governments are, and I couldn't, that's the pronunciation part that I couldn't catch. You said governments are fund to maintain? Are lack of, lay. Like, um, they lack maintain. Okay, so oh, that's... Lack. Back. Yeah, so that's where, yeah, and it's not just because of your pronunciation, but it's not the right kind of word structure there. So let me uh -huh. correct that, okay? So nowadays, um, because of uh, COVID-19, uh, governments uh, aren't maintaining. So simplify it, okay? Maintaining mm -hmm. um, uh, many facilities. And they are, it's a bit of a tricky one to express clearly. And they are um, in a poor state. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, so it was... I get what you're saying. It was a bit tricky. You're expressing a complex idea here. You have to be careful when you go into such a complicated explanation because it can get difficult even as a native speaker to find clarity. And then you said, mm -hmm. I think in the future, uh, buildings will be disappeared. Um, buildings uh, will disappear, not will be. So you use the oh. passive, but this should be active. Mm -hmm. They actively disappear. Okay. so. I think in the future buildings will disappear because uh, we can rely on the internet so lots of work and education can be solved by technology. I totally got what you're saying by that, however in the exam this is where an example would be very useful for the examiner. Okay, so mm -hmm. here I would have included something like uh, more than uh, 500 government and this is not a personal example, it's just an example. Mm -hmm. More than 500 government offices have closed in Taipei over the uh, last two years as people are working from home. Okay, uh, which is true. Okay. Like I see so many uh, buildings here in Victoria as well that used to have government uh, people, administrative offices, and now they're all closed, right? Like now you see like so many for rent signs for business uh, places, right? Um, mm -hmm. We see that here as well. And a lot of businesses realize they don't need an office. They can just have their workers working from home, right? So, but you need to give an example for that, right? Like you need to say something like, as I'm walking down the streets, I see so many for rent signs on these buildings, right? So some personal example. Um, and then I said, why do you think this? And you said, because I kind of smiled here. Um, if the examiner smiles or even laughs because some, they're human, you know, and they might laugh at something that you say, um, never take it personally never start joking with them just keep staying mm -hmm. professional okay um i kind of okay. i kind of laughed about this because because i empathized with you you said people are really sick of of, of i thought you're gonna say working with other people or being in an office with other people and i empathize with you i mean look at me i'm working from home right so um so that's why i was smiling but you never want to get emotional in the ielts exam you always want to just stay professional and the examiner will try to do that as well so why do you okay. think this? You said because with the significant growth of population, people are really uh, sick of um, going into uh, big office buildings. I think buildings will be used for living or education and not uh, for uh, government offices. <laughs> and then you said nothing important. That's why kind of I laugh because, you know, I'm sure other people too, like government, a lot of people think government offices do a lot of unimportant work. So um, you said not for government offices. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's uh, jump back to this 
previous question. I'm going to read the question, give the answer, and then copy after me, okay? Really try okay. to cop copy my pronunciation as well here, okay? So um, how do you think buildings will be different in the future than they are now? I haven't really thought about it. Just give me a second. Well, uh, previously or even nowadays, buildings, because of COVID-19, um, governments aren't maintaining these facilities and they are in a poor state. I think in the future, buildings will uh, disappear um, because we can rely on the internet. So lots of work in education can be solved by technology from home. Uh, more than 500 government offices have closed in Taipei over the last two years as people are working from home. So, uh, how do you think buildings will be different in the future than they are now? Mm, I haven't really thought about it. Just go give it, give me a second. Well, previously or nowadays, buildings because of COVID nineteen, governments aren't maintaining facilities, and they are in a poor state. I think in the future, buildings they will disappear because we can rely on the internet so lots of work and education can be solved by technology more than 50 hundred um, government offices have be have cost closed in taipei over the last two years as people are working from home very nice okay so um lucille that was uh much better so when you're speaking a bit slower your pronunciation becomes much clearer okay so mm -hmm. maybe slow down your speech by five ten percent and then put that emphasis into your pronunciation that speed was fine that was at least a band score better than your first answer Okay? okay, so you want to practice that. Do lots of practice around that, okay? That was much, much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, have a lovely weekend. Um, and uh, thank you again for all your hard work in the hospital. It's a beautiful um, work that you're doing. And keep coming back, okay? Okay, all thank right. you, teacher. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Bye, Lucille. Bye. All right, that was Lucille in uh, Taipei, Taiwan, calling in from hospital on call. Um, lovely conversation. All right, uh, so students, I can see that we've got lots of um, lots of lots more students in here. We've got a little bit more time. Let me see if I can ask at least one quick question from Anastasia. Okay, I'm here, Anastasia. Are you ready? And I think we've got one more question remaining in today's uh, speaking part three question. So Anastasia's still with us, still hanging in there, then I will reach out to Anastasia as I'm seeing that she's the only one left volunteering. Okay. Rashika, I see that you're typing answers into the chat, which is super, okay? Um, if you can't make a connection via audio, then why, might as well practice in the chat. Good for you, Rashika, okay? All right, I'm not getting a, a, a response from Anastasia, so I won't force it. But as you can see, students, there's a lot of students in here. There's about 20 people in the chat right now. And if you are in the uh, general um, uh, IELTS English Help channel and you click on Student Partner Speaking, uh, like magic, you will see the same group of people so it doesn't matter if you are in general IELTS or academic IELTS the chat is interlinked and we're working on putting that into our apps as well so it all links together in this beautiful platform to allow you to practice your speaking with other like-minded students practicing for the IELTS exam and you can see here two students that in the chat there's IELTS speaking scripts Okay, somebody just scared me with that phone call. Um, I don't know who's calling me, but uh, Anastasia. Okay, um, Anastasia, it, it'll have to be next time, okay? I'm on a different train of thought, but I appreciate you calling back. Anastasia, you'll be the first next week when I see you, okay? All right, um, so back to my point here. Um, IELTS speaking scripts, okay? Uh, you can click on people. And then you have questions here that you can ask each other. There are multiple um, 
uh, question sets for each one so make sure to use that okay people places objects again lots of people in here so come back uh, keep the window open practice with each other okay all right so um, for general IELTS go to gieltshelp.com click this big red button to join the premium package it's absolutely worth it one-time payment <clears throat> it costs as little as twenty dollars for many different countries like Vietnam and for uh, India um, so click that red button uh, begin learning for success today don't wait don't repeat the IELTS exam um, academic IELTS uh, same idea at uh, academic IELTS help uh, so aehelp.com uh, click this uh, button there okay um, I will be back uh, students um, on Thursday with more live classes until that time check out our YouTube channel we're always releasing new videos HD videos and of course our websites have all of our videos uh, organized into an effective lesson so highly recommend you checking that out um, that's it for me for today thank you to all of the volunteers um, wonderful work wonderful wonderful work um, Amrit uh, Lucille uh, Ghazi uh, thank you everyone keep up the good studies chin up push forward don't let anything discourage you stay motivated I'm Adrian much love to all of you wherever you are in our big beautiful world bye for now